Hey everybody, welcome back to the garage and it is a rainy night out tonight. Haven't been able to do much on the Super Auto. So I thought, you know what? I haven't done any tuning videos lately. It would be a good chance for me to go ahead and introduce a new topic to you guys. Specifically, how do we log boost in the scanner without having a boost sensor? So if you have a uh, normally aspirated engine and you are adding boost to it, I'm gonna show you how to add a boost Custom math. Stick around. Hey everybody, welcome back to the garage and I've got Seven, the tuning dog here, and she says, uh, you guys need to learn about how to log boost in the scanner. So there's a couple different ways that we can do this. The main one being is that we're gonna take our MAP sensor, which is a uh, absolute pressure sensor. And by absolute, that means that it will show you what ambient air pressure is whenever the vehicle is off versus a gauge sensor like your standard boost gauge, which is zero at atmospheric. So being that the MAP sensor is an absolute one, if you were to turn your vehicle on without actually starting it and start logging it, you're gonna read something on your MAP pressure. So if you have barometric, and I'm not saying that everybody is gonna have barometric, double check your PID list. If you have barometric, there's a pretty easy way of doing this where we can basically take map pressure, subtract barometric, and that's gonna give us boost. If we don't have a barometric pressure, what you can do is, as I said, turn your vehicle on without running it, see what you get as a reading for your ambient pressure, and then subtract that from your uh, map reading to get a boost pressure. So let's look at, I've got it pulled up down here. I've got a, a, a tune opened up that has both intake manifold absolute pressure and barometric down here. There's nothing reading in it, but if we scrub over, you can see where I'm at right now, it's 14 PSI. So let's go ahead and go up into our tools, open up our math parameters, find an empty user maths. In this case, number two is not being used and let's add a new variable. We'll choose our parameters and we are looking for manifold absolute pressure. We can go ahead and choose the first one that pops up here and it'll say, hey, do you want to use the generic one? Yeah, in this case, we're fine using the generic one. The cool thing about it is, is that we can change the units of it here over to PSI and that saves us from having to do some math. If I open this window up here, this is the math that we would normally have to do. We would have to take KPA and multiply it by 0.145 blah, 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 to get the PSI value. But since we are doing uh, custom math, we can actually choose to read that in PSI and it will do the math conversion for us from the get go. So we'll go ahead and add that one in there. Now, if you don't have a barometric pressure PID, what you need to do at this point in time is then subtract by whatever your ambient pressure is. And that would be what your map is reading whenever you are, uh, whenever you turn the vehicle on without running the engine. So that sensor, basically you wanna see what that sensor reads at atmospheric without anything happening. Uh, if it, you know, if you've got it reading in uh, KPA, find an online calculator and type in whatever it is and then subtract that. So in my case, where I know that our uh, barometric pressure in this area is 14, I would do minus 14. That's all it's gonna take for this. That's gonna take your map sensor minus 14 and create a boost. So I'm gonna put in here, this is gonna be boost versus uh, reference, but I'm gonna do one the other way where we use the barometric. And on that case, we're gonna do kind of the same thing where we come in here, we, we look for our uh, manifold pressure. We'll use the generic one, but we wanna use it in PSI. And then I want to add another variable that is barometric. And I'm already logging barometric pressure. I wanna log it in PSI also. And then I want to subtract the two. Okay, now that we've got our manifold pressure minus our barometric pressure, let's go ahead and add one decimal spot in there and our output is gonna be in PSI. We need to go ahead and do that on our other one. We'll name this one just standard boost. And then our boost versus reference, it's already in PSI, but let's go ahead and add one decimal in there. We can close that. Now we can go down into our chart 
right click on that and let's do our charts layout and we've only uh, got two in group one so let's add two more now I want those to be not two groups let's add two more charts into group one so we'll go ahead and grab our custom math our user defined math down here we'll grab our boost versus reference and so we got boost v ref and then for our second one we will just grab our standard boost which is going to be our boost uh, minus uh, barometric we'll just call this one standard boost and now we should have a couple boost readings on here let's bring this up large and if we scrub this there we go let's get over here to where we can actually see boost and you can see how the two are very close together we get into boost right about here and we're a tenth off boost versus reference is as i said is basically taking your manifold pressure and subtracting a uh, constant as opposed to our boost one that we did is taking our manifold and subtracting our barometric i would suggest if you have the barometric pid available to use that version of the two but if you don't you know, it's, it's fine using the constant as long as you realize that that is only valid where your elevation is at. So if you are here and your elevation is 3,000 foot above sea level and you go here and it's 2,000 foot above sea level, that is no longer going to be accurate. But if you have the barometric one, this is going to match up versus your boost gauge. And honestly, you probably don't even need to run a boost gauge. This is going to be as accurate because your boost gauge is literally a gauge uh, boost pressure sensor and it is kind of doing what you're already doing where you're taking a barometric pressure subtracting that in fact this was probably more accurate than any boost gauge because a boost gauge is tr you know may not have a true zero if you uh, turn on your boost gauge whenever your vehicle is not running and you're reading a negative 0.1 or a positive 0.1 that's because this thing has been calibrated probably for 14.6 or 14.7 uh, ambient pressure for the area because that's kind of what we consider the average uh, but this will take up the difference between what the actual barometric is so in, the cool thing about it is is if the DA changes things like that changes this is more accurate for your actual boost so I would suggest setting this up logging this because if you are making any kind of adjustments that are boost based this is going to be a lot more accurate than looking at an actual boost gauge this is looking at the changes if you have the ability to read barometric. If you don't have the ability to read barometric before you go out and do a tune, go ahead and turn this thing on without starting your engine. Get that baseline uh, map pressure and use that to update the constant on your custom math. And that way you have viable boost readings to look at. And yeah, that's basically it. This is one of the easiest and best custom maths that you can set up in HP tuners on the scanner if you're running forced induction and you don't have a factory boost uh, reference PID uh, if you're running aftermarket forced induction go out there set this up one of the two different ways uh, if you have any questions hit up the comments below if you have not already subscribed hit that button down there uh, I know that the tuning information has been a little bit thin lately because there's been a lot going on uh, as we kind of wrap up some stuff on the Super Auto project, trying to figure out what we're doing with the turbo versus the supercharger or the turbo and the supercharger, we're going to get back over to doing some more um, tuning videos. Uh, we're going to break 2,000 subscribers this weekend. I promise you, uh, if you didn't check out the limited edition koozies for the patrons that have already signed up, there's a very slim window. Once we hit 2,000, those koozies are gone. There's going to be a special edition 2,000 uh, subscriber celebration koozie coming out after that for anybody that's a patron. And I'll probably put a couple of those on sale for anybody that doesn't necessarily want to sign up for the Patreon if you want to just actually buy one of the Goat Rope Garage koozies, all that comes back to support, you know, buying stupid crap that we can do to the Super Auto and other things and the channel as a whole. So, but I want to thank everybody for their support. I want to thank you for tuning in. I want to thank you for subscribing. If you haven't, hit that button down below, throw a thumbs up. If you like this video, if you don't like this video, throw a thumbs down, but make sure if you throw a thumbs down, I expect you to comment down below. Tell me what you did not like about this video. That way I can custom tune this stuff, make it sure it is what you guys want to watch. 
Uh, there's more torque management videos coming out real soon. I promise you I'm going to get at least one out this weekend. Uh, there's a couple more tuning uh, ideas that I have coming up that I want to start diving into. So if, if you guys, trust me, you don't want to miss some of this stuff. We're going to start doing a deep dive on some of these features on HP tuners. And it is going to be stuff that nobody else looks at. Whether or not it is worth anything, I don't know yet. But we are going to look at some of the parameters that basically are ignored by everybody else and try and figure out what they do, what value that they bring, and whether or not we need to be tuning for them. I'll, I'm, you know, spoiler alert, I'm pretty sure that 90% of the stuff that we have access to in HP tuners, we don't need to be messing with. That's been my philosophy from the get-go. And so we're going to start trying to sort through all of the chaff to find what is worthwhile. But as always, come here, come on. Come here, come on, Kimber, hop up here. We got uh, the other tuning dog here. This is my Australian Kimber, and this is Seven, my Mutski. Everybody say, thanks for stopping by the garage. <laughs> you guys have a good weekend.